this story, I was unbelievably shocked that he didn't do his due diligence and to check out this story. Now, I'm not going to even bring up the story because it does not deserve any mention whatsoever. And that is the gangster report. Usually they have some pretty do good stuff out there. Not this one. And yes, I'll say it right off the bat. Yes, I'm biased on this one because I know it's not true. 100% not true what they were talking about. Now, the one article had to do with the mafia and the outlaws out on the east coast and they brought up an individual that i know had nothing to do with what they're saying nothing absolutely nothing but he tries in the article to tie the mafia with the outlaws motorcycle club and this individual works at a strip club and just because it's owned by somebody that is in that type of environment doesn't mean that he or the outlaws work with the mafia. Here in Chicago, we call them the outfit. It doesn't mean that. And when you do this type of reporting on an individual that has nothing to do with anything, you are really tarnishing his name, his image, and his right to be able to fight back. And you know that they're not going to fight back. You know that clubs do not like talking to the press, and this is exactly why they don't want to talk to you. Now, most of your stuff, and you openly admit it, comes from the federal government, from local and state police agencies. You openly admit it. What I don't understand, though, is why you would go back and say, well, I don't trust the cops and I, you know, I don't believe in the half the stuff they say. Then why did you print this article about this specific issue about the outlaws and the mafia working together? Why did you print that? Everybody works. Everybody has a legitimate job. And what you just did was put his job at risk. That's insanity. Now, I've seen these articles since those individuals you said went down. I've seen it. And I haven't said anything until you zeroed in on this one individual. Now, you also did it out of Chicago, and this was on a recent interview that you did with Mooch. You were talking about how the Chicago outlaws were in bed with the outfit. There was individuals, yes, that were members of the outlaws that went down in 2008, I think it was. I think it was three. That didn't mean the whole club, like you insinuated, had anything else to do with these people. Three people worked for him. Listen to what he has to say in this clip right here. I'm going to throw it right the now. Eight, the here boss we go. that took down Fat Mike Sarno, who was the boss of the Chicago Mafia, there were a number of Fat outlaws that were indicted and convicted with him. So, I mean, but I think even in that case, they were employed by those guys, but that wasn't the organization wasn't employed by those guys. Individuals oh, okay, but you, I, mean, I get your saying. Get, some of this we, is splitting hairs, but, split hairs for sure. but if you're an, you can't tell me if you're an outlaw that no, there's nothing going on with the Italian mafia when the boss of the Chicago mafia and three members of the outlaws are convicted together of a conspiracy to extort. Uh, video poker machine. Yeah, but you, you can't have it both ways, though. You were you were just talking about how you don't trust the government and they're liars and they're they manipulate. So, <laughs> uh, but a conviction is a con and that was out of your own mouth. Now, going back to this case out in Chicago, you had 
Big Pete on your show. For one, he was kicked out. He's out bad. And why is he? Because he wanted to play a wannabe gangster. It, it, it was one chapter that that investigation was in, uh, centering around with a couple people within that chapter. That didn't mean the outlaws had a working relationship with the Chicago outfit. You had a wannabe gangster out there that put a couple individuals in harm's way. And they're serving their time right now. But that infuriates me when you take that line of thinking. And just like your partner said, you said you don't trust the government. You don't trust law enforcement. But then you keep pushing this narrative that, hey, just because there was a conviction, it must be true. Do you say to that to the people that are released 30 years later for being wrongfully convicted? No, you won't. Because this is a story that's going to pass in a couple of weeks and you're going to go on to the next thing. I am very surprised that if you're an investigative reporter, you would know this kind of stuff. That when somebody works at a place of employment owned by, say, a wise guy, that doesn't mean they're involved in this stuff. And you sure to hell don't put on a whole blanket over an organization because of a couple individuals. I say that all the time. That it's a couple individuals that were messed up. And did something stupid. That doesn't mean everybody else is. Conviction. Let's continue. Well, it's over on that one. Let's go to something else you had to say right here. As far as informants. And this is the same stuff. That you say. Well, wait a second. I don't trust law enforcement because they use this, this, and this informant. This out of your own guys' mouth right here. For law enforcement looking to flip criminals are drug addicts. And believe me, one of the enticement factors for these drug addicts or, or druggies, they're getting, they're getting drugs from the, from the law enforcement. Law yep. enforcement's feeding the habit, so they don't have to pay for the drug. They're getting paid money from law enforcement for what they're doing, and they're getting free drugs. Yeah, if the, it seems like from a criminal justice policy perspective, the, the system is flawed to the extent that you're going to have someone put them in a position where they're going to tell you what you want to hear. And if you're Uncle Sam, <laughs> you've got this junkie informant, and, and they know that you want to hear that Mooch or whomever is, is up to no good, they're going to, they're going to. And that was uh, out of the interview that they were doing for Mooch. And I did put that interview link in the description box so you to go watch it because these are just two examples of what was said on that program. And you can see everything else that they were saying through that video. But it does upset me that they would put out this kind of article, this kind of nonsense when they're supposed to be on top of their game. Now, I don't know if they were off their game or what the hell it was. But one thing I know, and this ain't just with uh, the outlaws. This is with all the clubs out there. Because you have a federal government that is so freaking on fire to get a club with anything and everything they can. Yeah, they'll use freaking uh, drug addicts to do it. That's one of the reasons why clubs don't want anybody who smokes a class uh, dick or uh, shoots up in their club because it causes them nothing but trouble because them type of people are going to tell anybody anything so they can get their fix. You said it there right yourself. But to say that any of these clubs are in bed with organized crime is ridiculous, especially out on the East Coast with the story you did. It's ridiculous. You know, one of the patches that AOA has on them is biking and brotherhood. That's exactly what it is. What do you, you know, what is it with people that think that everybody's a gangster? You're feeding into the narrative of the federal government 
that everybody's a criminal when most guys can't even afford to pay their monthly dues. That ain't much of a gangster to me. And that's the kind of stuff that Pepe, uh, how can I say it, pushes the narrative that these cops want. Hell, I see it all the time over on Insane Wheels. And I don't even talk about clubs over there. Well, I'm independent this, lone wolf this, blah, blah, blah. Get out of here with that stuff. And then you'll see it in the comment sections as well. On here, on Insane Throttle. Extremely disappointed. But I can tell you they're dead wrong with that article they wrote about the East Coast. Dead wrong. It's about biking and brotherhood. This ain't 1980 anymore. Nobody's out there pushing mass drugs or killing people or bombing people. There's too much forensics out there. There's too much technology. There's too many cameras. Nobody's doing it anymore. Join the Insane Throttles Members Only Club. Two ways to join over on Spotify and YouTube. Insane Throttle Biker News' channel, by the way. With your membership, you get exclusive content Monday through Friday. China Dow's on there with me. Y'all love China Dow. Also, you get an invite to the yearly Rumble in the Woods, where we get together, have parties, have fun, so make sure you join